1963, uh, in the South, from Mississippi and Louisiana, blacks felt they had better opportunities going to Chicago, LA, or either Detroit. So a lot of you know uh, people that live there now, their roots come back to Louisiana or Mississippi. So my dad, uh, I think I was a few months old, like you know we out of here. So he took me and my other two siblings. They, but well, we were the youngest three. And, uh, and my older brother, Peg, and my oldest, they, they lived in uh, with my grandmother down the bayou. And my sisters, they kept coming back and forth, but I stayed and until I got like 13, then I moved. I came down here for the summertime, and uh, supposedly I'm thinking I'm going back. It's like, nah, man, your papa said he wants you to stay here. So I'm like, nah, man, I, man it's just it's a culture shock, man. I'm coming from L.A. to do like, Man, come on, you know what I'm saying? In California, I made American All-Star. Uh, I played with Daryl Strawberry, all these guys uh, at Gonzalez Park and at uh, El Segundo Park. Uh, George Henshaw played with the San Diego Padres. So my street, man, we had, uh, on the street I was on, we had about 12 guys uh, went to the pros. Darren Nelson, Kevin Nelson, Darren went to Stanford, Kevin went to UCLA, Floyd Hodge, you know, all these guys played in the league. So uh, that kind of, it, it, it bothered me a little bit because I, when I, when, you know, everybody thought I was going to be a professional baseball player. I figured living with my grandmother, I'd be successful because my brother lived with my grandmother, you know? And I wanted to eat what he ate. And my grandmother, she'd let you know, well, you know, your brother, he ran fast. He you know, and she would just tell me all these stories, you know? Because, like, see, we never lived together. And uh, by the time I got there, he was, you know, he went to college and got married. So, uh, but he, he set the bar high for me, man. I thank him all the time for it. Clowns was always a kid, man. He had a big heart. Always had, you know, I was a role model, you know? and. Pretty good role model, I think. Dude, you know, down the body, I was the guy. When I get to Oakland, you know, it's like, man, all these guys, man, these guys are good, you know. And then I get to South Trouble, you look at, you know, I mean, from Jay, you know, I mean, you're still for, uh, 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 you still, uh, uh, Stan, you got, you got, uh, 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 Skippy. I mean, it just goes on and go. Tommy Boudreaux, I mean, man, we had so much talent. Man, uh, it just amazed you look back and say, man, all these guys were successful when, when they went on to college also. And, you know, some of us went into the league. Me and my sister-in-law, my late sister-in-law, Cloris Verdan, uh, man, we must have we must have wrote letters to every school from UCLA to Memphis. I wanted to go to Michigan. I, I loved it, Anthony Carter. Man, that was my idol too. He was small, you know, and uh, and but I wrote, you know, Notre Dame, I mean, Nebraska, Johnny Rogers, uh, Man, that was, that was, those guys, you know, I, I idolized them too. Well, Coach Coach uh, Coach uh, Lockwood had came, I was in class, and they called me to Coach Marcella's office out of class. I'm like, man, why are they calling me? Something, something wrong, you know what I mean? And I go there and I see the guy with the USL shirt on, and uh, Coach Marcella's like, uh, this is Clarence Verde, and he looked at me like he saw a ghost. Like, this ain't the kid who wrote us a letter, the questionnaire, I told him I was six foot, 190, you know what I'm saying? Just to get somebody to look at me. And uh, then he told me, you know, he said, man, you know, we can't give you a scholarship, but we can give you a one week tryout as a walk on. And I wound up uh, catching a the bus there. Uh, the gray, I never had been to the stadium, man. Didn't know where the stadium was. Uh, walked all the way to the campus from the Greyhound and caught a ride to the stadium and got there. And, man, I saw the guys there and I was like, at odds because all these guys were so big, they was men. I mean, you had talk, I mean, I'm 16, 17 years old, these guys are 24 years old. And when I saw these guys, man, I was like, man, this is a one shot time, man. I have to show. And I just got one week. And I went out there and ran the 40, man. And that was it. They told me, man, look, uh, you're gonna be on a, uh, as a walk on, on the practice squad. And I was like, man, just let, I just want to be on the team. I don't care. Kevin Hodges will put his foot through it at the 40-yard line. Trinian Smith and Clarence Verdon are deep for the Cajuns. Verdon pulls it into the five-yard line. He's back to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, finds the team, 25-30. Verdon cuts back, 35-40, one man to beat at midfield. Fort to the 45, the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Clarence Verdon, 95 yards on the kickoff return. And USL has taken 13 seconds to take a 6 nothing lead over a very stunned bunch of owls. Lynn Amity. Lynn Amity. He was our office coordinator at the time. And, uh, man, he just, he, something he just cooked clean to me, man. And uh, I thank God for him because that year got me in the NFL. That Smith and Thomas Jackson, the setbacks behind Brudem from the West Texas State 41. Back to throw goes Brudem on play action. Long for Burden. He's open. Oh, touchdown! They 
they say, man, keep your hand off that guy, man. He run his mouth too much. And I was kind of before my time, you know. I was, you know, you know, when we came, it was about do your job, man, you know, keep your mouth shut, you know, be a team player, don't brag. But I figured that was my strategy to get noticed. I'm like, man, if I don't say nothing, a closed mouth don't get fed, especially being small. You know, I had to say something to get an opportunity. You know, I wasn't six foot one. Man, I always fought, fought that challenge of being too small. You know, that was my challenge every year. I had to prove myself, prove myself. Jack Party, man, I love him. Thank, you know, God bless his soul. Uh, he didn't talk too much, but he used to always talk to me. We spoke with Jim Kelly, and Jim Kelly said he wants you to stay. He said, you the guy. And I'm like, wait, hold on, is this a joke? He said, I said, well, who y'all releasing, coach? He said, we releasing Mark Rush, his roommate. No, no way, man, this is roommate. I, yeah, come on, man, let's just be. And I said, no, he said, Jim, Jim said, keep you. And man, I went to Jim Kelly, man, and uh, he said, uh, man, man, I get He said, uh, hey, bro, he said, you know, I know you don't, you're not making that much money, but anything you need, he said, you come by my house. He lived in Sugar Land. And man, people used to think I should go over there to play video games, but I was going over there because I didn't have nothing to eat. And you know, from that time, he uh, fed me the ball, played against Bobby against Michigan. And uh, man, he fed my first pass was a touchdown. And he fed me the ball, man. And uh, next thing you know, man, I was, I'm catching 80, 90 balls. And I was a backup. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be sitting there talking to you right now. Third, third round with the Redskins, man. And uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm like, dude, I can't wait till this USFL fold. You know, I'm out of here, you know what I'm saying? They kept some of us because we thought we was going to go in the NFL with, with, with the New Jersey General. So uh, Donald Trump, uh, President Trump, he released us. like, man, y'all can go. You know, like, this ain't going to work. So, man, that next day, Bobby Bethel called me. I'm down to buy him. Mom, and uh, he said, look, man, we got your rights. We drafted you. We got to get you up here like ASP. So my mom, she's on the other line. We don't, you know, we didn't have like three, but she, she, I'm on one phone. She on the other phone in the room. And uh, he said, now, let me tell you how much you're going to make. Now, these are say in the US affair, you know, the most I made was like fifty thousand dollars. You know, uh, so he was like, man, you know, we're gonna give you two hundred thousand dollars to sign. I'm like, hold on, man. What you said? He said, we're gonna give you two hundred thousand dollars to sign, uh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a base, and then another two hundred thousand, and another three hundred thousand for three years. Like, man, oh no, no, man, uh, uh no, this just got to be, this can't be real. I'm like, man, just give me the DC right now. Just give me the DC. Hey, Duck, call me Duck. He said, uh, we made it. And I just looked, I mean, I just said, what do you mean we made it? Man, NFL, watch the Redskins. And it kind of hit me, you know, because it brought me back when we were like man, eight, nine years old. Cause that's what we're talking about. And he said, we made it. I mean, I knew that was a special friend, you know. He didn't say, I made it. He said, we made it. And I'm like, nah, they got me catching punts. I, I wasn't a punt return, I was a kickoff return. And man, the ball hit me all over the head. It just, so I go to coach, I say, hey man, I can play wide receiver. He said, no, he said, son. He said, as long as we got Eric Dickinson in the backfield, we're gonna run the ball. We need you to catch kicks. So don't even worry about, we ain't throwing the ball, we running the ball till Eric get tired. So I'm like, okay, you think that's gonna work? Okay, I'm gonna show you something. So as I started returning the kicks, man, Ursay like, hold on. Man, we got to get the ball in this guy's hand. I don't care if they kick it in his hand or throw it or hand it all to him, just put it in his hand. And that's that's how that scenario came. And then Eric Dixon, he gets mad because now he we doing reverses, he got to hand the ball off to me. So he gets mad talking about, well, I'm a future Hall of Famer. I'm not a quarterback. I shouldn't be handing the ball off to nobody. And I'm like, well, maybe I maybe I'm betting you, bro. By a suddenly frisky cold. And he comes to the near side, hops away, cuts back into the middle, gets across the 30. Oh, he's he's gone. Gone. He's gone. Jimmy Earth said, well, I, I, I show love to him, man, because, uh, you know, at one time he made me probably the highest player. I was one of the highest play, players on the team at, the, at that one time. Yeah, man. And uh, he like, man, just keep your mouth shut. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then when everybody found out, it came a frog. He said, man, something I always wanted to tell you, bro. I said, what? He said, man, uh, you know, when I was in Indianapolis, when they drafted me, 
He said, man, you know why they drafted me? I said, no, oh, I guess you. I was mad when they drafted you because we didn't need a wide receiver. We needed some defensive player. The Jim Kelly and Marino was killing us. He said, man, they drafted me and told me uh, that I'm going to be replacing you, man. He said, you didn't never know that, huh? I said, ah, oh, bro. I said, well, I got something to tell you, man, that you might didn't know. He said, what? I said, bro, you know why they traded you? I said, because I went in and told them to get rid of you, man. I said, now, you, 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 yeah, did you know that? <laughs> yeah. I said, there was enough room for me, you and Eric Dickerson, dude. Somebody had to go. I said, now, you put that in your pipe and you smoke that one, bro. When I said something about Ark Monk, that could have got me cut, you know. Coach was like, man, you know, you haven't caught a pass here. You talk about name Ark Monk. Man, Ark Monk, all pro, da, 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 future Hall of Fame. You ain't got the right to, da, 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 da. So they, they, they say, hey, man, you know what? You never shut up. Just shut your mouth. You know, you, you run your mouth like CNN news. That, that, that's what they kept up. That's CNN in there. <laughs> yeah. If I was in this era here, I would be like uh, Antonio Brown. He reminded me so much of myself, you know. And, you know, good or bad, you just want to be in the, in, in the media. It sells. You know, you got to sell yourself. And doing the bird ads, man, it made me a lot of money off the field. You know, Pepsi commercial with MC Hammer. I mean, you know, a lot of things, man. I was invited to a lot, me, Icky Woods, and Dion. So th those guys came off me. The fans can celebrate, why can't I celebrate with them? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, they, they, so tell me, I told them, I said, well, tell you what, the, tell the fans if I score a touchdown, don't jump up. Everybody sitting in season, see how good that gonna go. <laughs> Dan and Anthony Miller are back to receive. For Dan. Uh oh. Trying to get to the outside. For Dan, past the 40, there's a flag down on the play, and it looked like a face mask. Man, you know, I done been honored a lot of things. This here, it, it just, it, 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 it's above all that, man. Cause just when you recognize from your hometown, man, that that man that shows presence, man. When you, you know, people that you grew up with, and they recognize your talent because they was part of that. You know, all this, you know. I mean, when we played, you know, TPR, man, the competitiveness, and that took you. That I kept that 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 drive going, man, going.